In this video, we're going to learn how to check if a string in C contains all unique characters. In other words, that the string contains no repeating characters. So for example, if we have the string car string is equal to, and we have A, B, C, D, and then B, F, G, H, I. This string here does contain a repeating character. The character lowercase b occurs twice. What we can do to check if the string contains all unique characters is check the string one character at a time, from the start of the string up until the end of the string. And we'll check to see if that character repeats in the remaining portion of the string. So for example, we would first check lowercase a, and then we would check the string from the next character onwards to see if that character occurs in the remaining portion of the string. A does not. Then we would check B, and we would check to see if B occurs in the remaining portion of the string. And lowercase b does occur here. So we would find this string does have a repeating character. Let's implement this algorithm now. We'll include a couple libraries to help us. We'll include the stdbool.h library, so we can use bool values true and false. We'll also include the string.h library, so we can use the string function strlen to find the length of a string. We'll create a function to solve this problem. The function is going to return a bool value, true if the string contains all unique characters, and false otherwise. We'll call the function all unique, and the function will accept a string as an argument. So we'll have here car star string as the function parameter, then we'll supply a definition of this function down here. And the first thing we'll do is find the length of the string using the str len string length function. We'll declare an int type variable called length to store the string length. Then we'll call the str len function and we'll pass it our string. This function is going to return the length of the string not including the special null terminator character that's at the end of each string in C. So it doesn't include that special character there. Then we'll create a loop to go through each index in the string one at a time. So we'll have here for int i is equal to zero, i is going to be our counter variable, and we'll have i is less than length, and then i plus plus. So i is going to go from zero by one up until, but not including the length of the string. That's going to take i through each index in our string here up until the last character in the string. And then we'll have another nested loop that checks to see if the character at the index i is found in the remaining portion of the string. So next we'll have a loop with another counter variable, we'll have for int j is equal to, and we'll have i plus one, we'll have j is less than length, and j plus plus. So if i is at this index here, one, what we're going to do is start the counter variable j off at the index two, which is going to be here. Then we'll have j go from that index by one, up until the last index in the string. So j is going to be used to go through the remainder of the string. And what we'll be checking for is if the character at the index i, the character we're currently looking at, has a match in that remaining portion of the string. So let's check for that. We'll have here, if the string at the index i is equal to the string at the index j, we found a repeating character because this means the character we're currently looking at matches some character in that remaining portion of the string that this loop is going through. And in that case, we can return false because we know not all of the characters in the string are unique. Now, if we go through every character in the string and for no characters, is this the case? If for no characters, we can find a repeating character, then all the characters in the string must be unique. So what we'll do is down here, we're going to return true. 
if we check all the characters in the string and none of them have a repeating character in the remainder of the string. So we can now test out our function. Up here, we'll call all unique and we'll pass it our string. And if the function returns true, then we'll have an if statement here to check for that. And in that case, we'll output all string characters are unique, followed by a new line. And we'll have an else case with another printf. And in that case, we'll output with printf, all string characters are not unique, followed by a new line. And if we save, compile, and run the program, we'll get that all string characters are not unique, which is correct. We could make another test string. So maybe we'll call this test string string two. So we'll have all string two characters in our strings here. Then we'll have car string one is equal to, and we'll have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. And we'll copy this code here and we'll paste it here and we'll call the function with string one now. So we'll have string one and string one and string one. Then if we save, compile and run the program, we now get that all string one characters are unique, which is correct. This string contains no repeating characters and we still get that all string two characters are not unique, which is also true. So our function is working. Now we could implement a more efficient version of this function. Right now, our function essentially has to go through the string many times because we go through the string once, one character at a time. And for each character, we have this loop go through the remainder of the string. So we're going to be going through the string quite a bit. We could make a function that has a loop that only goes through the string once. That would be more efficient. When the string length function is called, it's also going to have to go through the string once to determine the length of the string. So we'll also eliminate this call to string length. What we'll do is instead stop our loop once we reach the null terminator character at the end of a string. So this character here at the end of each string. We'll also remove the usage of a counter variable. When we pass a string to a function like string one or string two, What's really passed to the function is a pointer to the first character in the string. And that's what our parameter car star string is going to store. It's really going to store a pointer to the first character in our string. And we can use pointer arithmetic and dereferencing of pointers to access each character in the string. So initially string is going to point to the first character in our string. If we have string plus plus, that's going to use pointer arithmetic to have this pointer point to the next character in the string. So string plus plus would then have this pointer here point to the next character in the string. And we could do it again and again to go through each character in the string. We can dereference the pointer and access the character that string is currently pointing to with star string. So right now, if string was pointing to this lowercase b character here, star string would give us lowercase b. So we'll use these two operations instead of using a counter variable to go through the string one character at a time. We'll call our new function all unique to. It's also going to return a bool value. It's going to return true if all the characters in the string are unique and false otherwise. It's also going to accept a string as an argument and we'll have a parameter car star string again. We'll copy this and we'll supply a definition of the function down here. So we'll have bool all unique to, and the way we'll solve this problem this time to eliminate the need to go through the string multiple times is we'll create an array of bools. So a car is only one byte. There are only 256 possible characters. And technically some of those characters are not printable, but we're not going to worry about that. There's only 256 possible characters with a car. So we'll have here a bool array called found of length 256. 
and we'll initialize all the elements in this array to false. Now each car in C, like for example, lowercase a, has an associated integer value. So lowercase a is really the integer value 97, and lowercase b is really the integer value 98. And this mapping of characters to integers is called a character encoding. We're assuming that we're using the ASCII character encoding, where we have 256 characters. There are more advanced and more modern encodings like UTF-8, but we're not going to worry about those in our solution here. So this solution is intended to work with ASCII. And so lowercase a in single quotes like this can actually be used in C in place of 97. This effectively is the value 97 in C. So if we had found and then at the index, lowercase a, this would be accessing the index 97 in this array. And we could set it equal to true. So what we'll do in this solution is loop through our string one character at a time. And each time we'll set the index in the found array for that character equal to true. Before doing that though, we'll check to see if that index already has its element set to true. If that's the case, we've already found this character before and the function can return false because the characters in the string are not all unique. Let's implement that. We'll have here a while loop. We'll have while and we'll dereference the pointer string to get the character that it's currently pointing to with star string. And if that character doesn't equal the null terminator character at the end of a string, that means we haven't reached the end of the string yet. And in the loop body, we'll check to see if the character that we're currently pointing to in the string with the pointer string has already been found. So here, we're again dereferencing the pointer variable string to get the character that it's currently pointing to. And if that character has already been found, then we can return false because that character is not unique and all the characters in the string are therefore not unique. Now, if the element in this array for this character is not true, that means it's still set to false from before when we initialized all the elements in the array to false. What we'll do is now recognize that we have found the character for this index in the array by setting that array element to true. So we'll have found at the index star string is equal to true. So the next time we encounter this character, this if statement condition is going to be true and the function is going to return false. And that's what we want because at that point, the character would be a repeat. And finally, we'll have string plus plus. And this here is going to increment the pointer. It's going to have string point to the next character in the string. And eventually this loop is going to stop when string points to the null terminator character that ends the string. Then we'll return true if we go through the entire string and never find a repeating character. So up here, we'll now test this function. We'll call all unique to, and we'll call all unique to. We'll save compile and run the program. And again, we'll get that all string one characters are unique, which is true. And we'll get that all string two characters are not unique, which is also true. So this is how we can determine if a string contains all unique characters using C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.